I, I just want to key off of what the markets are doing because we're seeing equities in Asia seeming to to hold up pretty well and even move higher the last couple of days. Yields are rising following in the in the path of of the U.S. bond market. And of course, that's the bond market is following in the path of Jay Powell painting a very hawkish picture. So as you as a strategist try to figure out what you're doing and where you're going to continue to do, how do you put this together? Well, uh, it's true that uh, due to uh, the speeches from uh, Jerome Powell and uh, the recent message from FMC, uh, there is a bit of a rotation uh, between asset classes uh, um, uh, that's going on right now. And on top of that, of course, uh, you know, since last week, uh, we've gotten uh, more positive signals from uh, Ukraine and Russia talk, as well as uh, China's, uh, you know, macro and, and regulatory policy. So, so these things are kind of coming together with a bit of uh, extra push from uh, dollar yen. Uh, you know, when it rises, it's generally, you know, good news for the risk appetite of the market. Um, uh, and, and these things are um, kind of supporting the equity market sentiment a little bit. Um, uh, from our perspective, um, uh, you know, the, the risks in the medium term, uh, you know, related to the supply side shocks from the, you know, the conflict in Ukraine are not, uh, you know, uh, have not gone away yet. Uh, we're still coping with that. Uh, so we will be a bit more patient about, uh, you know, the market trajectory in the medium term and, and, and think about maybe looking through uh, the recent rally. Um, uh, but um, uh, what, what's clear is that uh, just like the past geopolitical crisis, equity markets tend to be a bit more resilient, um, uh, it, you know, uh, uh, through these episodes. And uh, for the bond market, uh, uh, you know, dynamic, uh, it, it certainly points to some medium-term cyclical ri uh, cycle risk. Um, uh, so, so in the very near term, it makes sense for the investors to to, to stay, you know, stay in the short duration side and, uh, you know, uh, try to be very mm -hmm. selective uh, in, in what kind of risk they play uh, in the bond market. Well, you know, one of the themes that's really come to life, you know, tech, big tech uh, got hit pretty hard in the last couple of months. And then in the last week or so, we're seeing, uh, you know, Chinese big tech doing better. The government helped that. But we're seeing it in, in other Asian nations as well. And China Dragon Index and uh, U.S. tech. So how far do you think this rebound in tech stocks will go? That's our question of the day, by the way, Homan. Of course. Uh, it's a big question for every uh, everyone uh, in the market. Um, uh, again, this is, this is mostly a relief rally. Um, uh, so it's important that we have some sort of resolution uh, on the conflict in Ukraine, which has implications for inflation trajectory and monetary policy. And, and let's keep in mind that, you know, this risk has not gone away completely yet. Um, there is a bit of correlation, uh, you know, uh, between, you know, tech, se tech sectors of different countries right now, because, you know, obviously China was something that was dragging down the entire tech sector to a degree, especially in the Asia-Pacific region. But now with this, uh, you know, more encouraging gestures and signals from Beijing regarding the listing rules uh, um, and, you know, coordinate, you know, discussions with the U.S. authorities on the audit uh, requirements. Mm. Um, uh, it, it, it's giving, it's creating the sense that maybe it's close to the bottom. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, this is a sector that has been beaten down relatively in the last 12 months. So it, it does make sense that, uh, you know, on this signal, uh, the sector rebounds a little bit and actually brings the, the other tech, tech names a uh, uh, little bit uh, together. What are you using as inflation hedges within that portfolio? Um, so uh, we're using uh, some commodity exposure as a hedge for uh, uh, as a hedge for equity um, uh, portfolios, uh, or rather, uh, broader uh, financial portfolios. Um, uh, and within the equity port, uh, equity uh, buckets, uh, we're also trying to to diversify further geographically. Uh, so, uh, in addition to keeping some existing exposures to the main markets. Uh, we are actually using markets such as UK and Australia, uh, which have performed pretty well so far this year due to their distance from the geopolitical, relative distance from the geopolitical risk, a bit of valuation advantage, you know, at least you know, versus the, the expensive markets like the US, and their positioning uh, in the commodity market cycle. So, uh, so these are the markets we also uh, tend to use. 
um, uh, for a bit of diversification within the equity market, uh, equity uh, portion of the portfolios.